Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and this is a series of clips from a video posted at my site, johntermel.com slash christ11.wmv, Windows Media Viewer, streamed. YouTube used to let me upload over two hours at a time, and since they've been taken over by Google, now I'm down to 15 minutes at a time, and that's just too much work. So here are a few excerpts from the hour I posted on my research about Jesus Christ on this, the last Christmas, that I would expect us to have to suffer the hell of exponential debt. See, and all of my videos, the index, are at johntermel.com slash kotp, king of the poppers, dot htm. So I have now reread all that Bible poetry updated with all the recent discoveries in the last 20 years. And that'll be the first 45 minutes of this tape. And then after that, we'll go into the recent developments and why I think that the kingdom of heaven that Jesus said was at hand is really at hand and it's going to happen before next Christmas, I bet. So recapping it all, seven times the differential equation for how your bank account works to those who have abundance will more be given from those who have no abundance, even what they have will be taken away. Seven times the most repeated verses of Jesus' words in Scripture, and that's how interest works. Kind of neat when you think about it. Jesus' mission, like in the Our Father, was to forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and that would basically give us a new world. Since 1991, I've heard other stories, like maybe he survived the crucifixion, maybe... He wasn't a poor carpenter, but maybe all that gold that the Magi, Magi gave him made him actually a rich crown prince who went and got educated in foreign lands and then came back and talked about helping the poor and got thumped out by the rich. But then in the mid-1940s, the Nag Hammadi Scrolls were discovered with Thomas, Gospel of Thomas. And in it, Thomas 95, he said, if you have money, do not lend it out at interest. Jesus said, well, no wonder that gospel got written out of the official Bible. When you consider what other things have been written out of the official Bible, officially, I've complained about. The Our Father has been changed from forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, which would give us heaven here on earth. And it's been converted into forgive us our sins or trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us for heaven in the afterlife. Well, excuse me, Jesus' message was forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors for heaven in this life. And someone converted that. And the most recent changes in the Bible were Nehemiah 5.10, where the argument, he used to yell at them and say, hey, you're charging interest. Let the exacting of interest stop and give them back their stuff. And now it just says, hey, you're charging interest. Give them back their stuff. They cut out the line, let the exacting of interest stop. So there have been some alterations done in verse right in front of our eyes recently in this generation. So how can we not believe there have been alterations from the past? So, Jesus' kingdom of heaven. Now how many times did he say the kingdom of heaven is like? And then he described hell with loan sharks with alleys where men weep and gnash your teeth and the masters who could execute you. You know, doesn't sound like heaven to me. So, but the kingdom of heaven is like, and he kept saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, of course, everybody thought that, oh, it's coming up, you know, and Jesus is going to come back now and he's going to beat off all the Romans and all the loan sharks and we'll have heaven on earth. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it didn't happen. 20 years later, 30 years later, hey, Jesus ain't come back. You know, kingdom of heaven ain't here yet. What's going on? He said it was at hand. But what does at hand really mean? Well, it can also mean right beside you as opposed to coming up next. Let's say you got the normal x-axis. And, you know, if you go that way, it's a step to the better. And, you know, uh, in time, one step over in time and things will get better. But that's not going to help here because it's not happening. We're looking 20, 30, 50, 2,000 years later, we're still in debt slavery. So it ain't the time. It ain't in hand with time. 
Now, what if it was on another axis, the problems axis? And what if all we had to do was step from problems to no problems? Well, you'd say that, wow, the kingdom of heaven is right at hand. If all we have to do is do this and our problems, and rather than not worry about when. Well, I've always been saying recently, I mean, with the Argentine solution, I mean, last week I did a video just before Christmas saying it could happen by this Christmas if the original Argentine prophecy comes true for 2011. And then I pointed out it's really probably right for 2012. We still got a year for it to come true. Now, I'm saying, could the kingdom of heaven, as described by Jesus, that's right at hand, happen before the Mayan prophecy? And isn't that incredible that the change from the hell we're in to stepping into no problems no more, heaven, could happen in a year predicted 5,200 years ago. That's pretty neat when you think about it. Well, we have not yet had every state in the world agree to accept each other's bonds denominated in time so that we can all have a functioning, interest-free global banking system that will save our planet yet. But we got a year to get them to admit that they should simply accept each other's provincial and state bonds, and they have an alternate currency denominated in time that goes global and saves our planet. So we can do that within the next year, and that is what the kingdom of heaven is really like. The kingdom of heaven is this. The part in the poem about where I'm describing what is heaven like. We got technology, we got medicine, we got fuel, games, health care, you know, I mean, what a wonderful society if we didn't have all these damn debts. And Jesus was basically saying that the kingdom of heaven was simply this without growing debts. Now, if the debts don't grow, you can pay them back eventually. That's heavenly debts. But if the debts grow by themselves with usury, well, that turns it into a hell. So this world is now a hell because the loan sharks are allowed to loan shark to people and run the money system. And we've now achieved a point in our history, society, where people are escaping their loan shark net, as Habakkuk complained in the earlier verses, by M-Pesa in Africa, in Kenya. I mean, these people are destitute. They have no bank accounts, but they all have a cell phone and a cell phone account. And the cell phone company said, hey, we'll let you transfer credits back and forth, text it back and forth, so that you can text so many cell phone minutes to the butcher in your village and he'll give your mama some meat. And they started using their cell phone minutes as their alternate time currency. Well, why can't we do that? Because we still got stuff the bankers want to foreclose on. We're still rich enough. But they're destitute. Nobody's got a bank account. So they're free to switch to the alternate currency. And when was the last time you saw a riot coming out of Africa, if, unless it was in a war-torn district? So the solution is happening. We have in Japan the Furia Kipu Healthcare Hours Time Bank, where you can put in hours taking care of people, and then you can have those hours take care of your mama elsewhere. Same idea. Dennis Kucinich with his uh, HR 2990 to have the Fed supplanted and taken over by the Treasury and using interest-free Treasury notes instead of Fed bank notes at interest. I mean, with the Argentine solution, we can see this whole world is changing. And when we do finally get rid of the loan sharking, we end up with what Jesus called his kingdom of heaven. When our debts are forgiven as we forgive our debtors and uh, everybody has access to credit, like Isaiah said, you who are hungry and have no money, come buy and eat. Well, how do you buy if you got no money? Credit's okay, but it's got to be interest-free credit. That's all. Give back what you got, and that's all we ask. No increase in debt. And the only question is, can we switch over from the hell of a world, you know, with exponential debts, enslaved by debt slavery, to a world where debt equals money, 
and there's enough for everybody to get in the game and we can exert maximum industrial power and then divert attention from financial games for profits into cleaning up nuclear for profit and cleaning up oil disasters for profit and basically doing all the infrastructure repair we can't now afford because it's all wasted in financial games and manipulations going to the red. There's almost no historical records of Jesus out there. So could he have been written out of history? Well, if his message was, let's all get together and form a commune and put our money together and keep ourselves out of debt and do barter trading interest-free and do like Paul said, your abundance should at the present time be a supply for their want so their abundance can later be a supply for your want. And in that way, he who gathers much doesn't have too much. And he who gathers little doesn't have too little. That there be equality. Isn't that nice? So Jesus said, you can have capitalism where the guy who hustles makes more, keeps more. But his spare, he drops off at the bank, and that gets lent out to the guys who can plant it. Hoping that if ever he's short, they'll be there fat, being able to help him back. So you have all these let's communes spreading around in Jesus' time. And I think that was the threat and the message that the loan shark banksters who are running the Roman Empire didn't want anybody to know about. Can the kingdom of heaven be at hand so that if the Mayan prophecy is fulfilled by next Christmas, can we actually step in the problems axis from usury, and that's an imaginary axis, Laplace transforms, that's the axis, step from usury positive feedback onto the origin with no feedback. Yeah, we can. And it's as easy as that. Because the Trekkie generation have seen Mr. Spock do it umpteen times. Get that central computer and everything is fixed. Well, you know, reprogram that bank central computer and everything is fixed on the planet too. We're at that stage finally. And why aren't they shooting me? because they know I'm never going to stop my revolt until I have an interest-free world where they don't have that control over me. And that may be because part of my platform is for Prime Minister of the Planet. If you YouTube, I'm the only candidate. ASA, Global Aspirin. Amnesty, security, anonymity. Amnesty for everybody who ever did a financial crime. If you said I did it for the money, okay, okay, we understand. Shortage of money, why you did it? Don't do it again. Here's a credit card. Security. Don't do it again now. You can always borrow what you need. No excuse for stealing, right? And finally, anonymity. You know, if you did so many horrible things while it was the law of the jungle, kill or be killed in the death gamble, you want to change your name from Rothschild or Rockefeller to Smith, anonymity too. And we get on with partying in heaven and we forget about the hell and the complaints of the past hell. So we have to forgive and forget. And that's the banksters too. And get on with partying in heaven. So we have one year to fulfill the Mayan prophecy. And that's easily done when the world's states agree to accept each other's time-based bonds. And then pay their workers with them. And that is the instantaneous solution to put our whole planet on maximum industrial power at useful stuff. Like cleaning up the environment, infrastructure repair, and certainly not going to need many social workers, judges, <laughs> jailers, bailiffs, warriors, you know, and politicians, I guess. So my own prophecy, I called the William Hill bookmakers in the UK, said, hey, what odds you give me? I want to bet that the world is all fixed, that they're beating their plowshares, their swords into plowshares, they're beating their tanks into tractors by next year. So we'll find out what odds they gave because way back in the... 2000 or so, I made a 15 million to 1 odds bet on Lord Such ever getting elected after his losing 41 elections. And, well, he's now dead, so I lost that bet. But they give those kind of odds. So I want to know what odds I can bet that the world is fixed by next Christmas. So, let's see, I think it's a good bet. You should call him up and get in on it, too. So I'm Johnny Engineer Termel saying that I believe that the kingdom of heaven, as described by Jesus, which is this world without interest, is at hand. So, this is the last Christmas I'd expect we're going to be in hell, 
and let's hope by next Christmas this planet can call itself Eden instead of dirt. <laughs>